All right, so next thing to think about is how do you future-proof your major? Because the last thing you want to do is pick a major right now and then graduate and find out that nobody's hiring anybody who has degrees in your major, right? So you wanna make sure whatever major you decide on, it's a major that's going to be in demand and it will be easy finding a job. So how do you do that? The best advice is hack the system, right? This is how you hack the system. Go online, do your homework, and Google and find lists of top 10 most, most in-demand jobs for this current year, right? For 2017. Then also look for most in-demand jobs five years from now, 10 years from now. And then also look up jobs that are going out of stock, jobs that are stale. Because the last thing you want to do is go in, into a field or in a major that puts you in a job that's trending downwards. You want to go in a job that's trending upwards, a shooting star. So pretty much with me, when I was in ninth grade, it was just some, this is how I picked my major, right? So we were in some class with our, with our guidance counselor and they, she gave us a piece of paper showing the most in-demand jobs for college graduates, right? Based on majors. So in that job, I think it was like 10 or 15 jobs. The top three jobs were computer science or computer engineering related jobs. So I checked the list and back then in school, my favorite subject was social studies. That was my favorite subject. Like I, I, was, I was a beast in social studies, taking AP classes, honors classes, and I was like the best in the class getting the highest grades because I just love different cultures, different people, lifestyles, because being an immigrant is kind of my background. So I truly understood that. But social studies was nowhere on the list. And I told myself, you know what? I can't do social studies, man. Like, <laughs> like I'll be broke forever, right? But I noticed that in the top three, computer engineering and computer science were in the top three of most highly paid majors. And back then, the, the number on it was, if you graduated, this was, this was in pre-2006, pre-2006. I graduated high school in 2006. So prior to that, back then, the average salary for a computer engineering graduate was $92,000. So that was the benchmark. I'm like, okay, I, I can definitely live off of that, all right? So I, I said, I looked at all the other majors in the top 10, top 15, and there weren't really majors that I liked, but I knew I loved computers. I wanted to work in tech. I, I looked at people like Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, so I was like, hey, you know what? This is a match made in heaven. This is the best major on this list for me where I can, with a high probability, know and expect to make a good level of income after graduating college, right? So that's exactly what I did. This was back in ninth grade, right? So I took my passion for computers and technology and combined it with this list of top 10 jobs and found the best match on that list. And that became my major, right? And whatever hobbies or passions I had that were not on that list, I took those off. Those were not possible options in terms of things for me to major in. Right? So I would say the same exact thing for you guys out there. If you're undecided on a major, right, get a list of your best hobbies and get a list of the most highly paid and most in-demand jobs for right now and the future, right? Because a job that's in demand right now may not be in demand after you graduate. So make sure it's it's something that's trending upwards, right? In terms of people, are, more jobs and more opportunities are available each year and match them up and marry them and find the best hobby and passion you have that's on the top 10 list. That's how you should pick your college major.